All right, welcome back to Sidious Mag live from Eugene. It is day seven, I think. I'm losing track at this point. I feel like we've been in Eugene forever. Uh, Chris Schaub is here joined by, we're gonna complete the set of the US Olympic heptathlon team we've already had on Anna Hall, Shari Hawkins, and now we welcome on Talia Brooks. Third time's the charm here at the trials. Congratulations. It is, thank you so much. Thank you, I'm excited to be here. So. The competition, this was not an easy one for you. I guess like, want, can you walk me through, I guess like the two days, because there were some, like I wouldn't call them, maybe they were scary moments, but just sort of like nerve wracking moments. Yeah, no, definitely. I came into the meet like super excited, super confident. Um, I think everybody knows that hurdles is one of my best events and you always want to start off like super strong. I had a great warm up, and then I don't know what hurdle it was. I think it might've been hurdle eight. I hit it and I saw the whole meat like flash before my eyes. And I was like, oh my God, you have to stay on your feet and just do what you can to get through the finish line. So yeah, we started kind of rough with those uh, hurdles. I think I was in shock, like going into the high jump, but I just tried to take it one event at a time. There were a few events where I was unsure if I was gonna make it through just because random stuff started just happening like mm -hmm. in the warm-ups and whatnot but i told coach johnson i was like coach johnson i earned my spot with my three worst events the the shot put the jab the 800 i pr'd in all of them but i think it just shows the hard work that we've put into those one thing that i found really interesting is just sort of like the comeback story um you know given what happened at the last trials with you i guess can you set that up i guess for for people just to, the context around just sort of the ghost that you had to essentially like erase here. Yeah, uh, after the 2021 trials, like after the heat exhaustion, all that stuff, it took me a long time to like muster up the courage, maybe that's the word, to mm -hmm. like come back. So in 2022, we had the trials in Fayetteville. Um, I was I was hurt, so that was just a, a year that doesn't exist in my mind. But then 2023, getting ready for Budapest, mm -hmm. I think I had a lot of anxiety coming back to Hayward after that. Um, but I think making that team really set me up mentally for this year. Mm -hmm. And coming back to Hayward, I didn't have as much of like the mental jitters of actually just being here and going through the trials. But I knew what the heartbreak felt like, and yeah. I knew I didn't want to feel that again. So I think that was a lot like on my mind coming into it like i don't want to feel that we've worked really hard for three years like we're going to make it through this and hopefully get on that team mentally what did you do to kind of like strengthen yourself just sort of like to not think about it like i feel like even someone like anna like you getting into the blocks for the hurdles like i feel like i would have been just kind of so nervous but it has been a while and so it's like yeah. all right i've done so much since then uh, like i can't let this you know the storyline that definitely the broadcast is playing up you know ruin my day right it's a good thing we can't hear the broadcasters <laughs> yeah. i haven't watched it back yet uh i probably will because i always go back and watch the broadcast but i don't know i've worked a lot with a few different therapists like the first year i think 2022 i was just with like a regular life type of therapist mm -hmm. and then this year i was with more of a sports psych um and they've really helped me each of them like in their own way, just with the anxiety and with like, I can't control what has happened in the past, but I can control like what's going on now and what I'm doing through each event. And so, yeah, it was super nerve wracking. Like I just, I don't know. I just had to breathe through it. I really uh, leaned on like my coaches and my PT Andy, like even after the hurdles, he's just wrapping my, my ankle and he's like, you got it. You'll get it back in this long in this high jump. And so I think really the people around me has helped me reach yeah. that point. This trials in particular, like the stakes are just so high, right? And like, do you feel like this was the toughest competition on paper? Because I mean, like the top, you know, four or five were all like suitable contenders to make this team. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I think my mindset just coming into this one was a little different. Like I knew it was going to be a hard team to make. Uh, I knew I would have to hit like all of my events, which I didn't even end up doing. I hit, <laughs> again, hit the bad ones. Um, but I knew like one event could change everything mm -hmm. for you. I mean, we obviously we saw that in the hurdles. We saw it in Shari's javelin. Yeah. And obviously it's Olympic trials, like everybody rises up. And I think that's something that I've learned from the last Olympic trials, mm -hmm. like the last Olympic trials and just how we approached it. I was running really fast in the hurdles. I was jumping far. And I went into it like, oh, I'm gonna win the track meet. I'm gonna be on the team. Um, but everybody else rose up as they should have. Yeah. And so I knew that coming in, like you can't count anybody out. Even going into that 800, like 
Shari, I think, ran a freaking season's bet. She ran 214 yeah, yeah. in her 800. Uh, like, you can't count people out. She no. threw 49 meters. I love her to death. Um, but those are, like, some numbers that stick out to me, like, of people rising up. I mean, I threw 1423. I've never even thrown over <laughs> 1350. Wow. Um, and so that's just, you know, an example of it's the trials. It's the stage everybody wants to be on. You can't count anybody out. It doesn't matter how they've looked coming into the track meet. You've got to respect the field, and you've mm -hmm. got to put your best foot forward. The emotional outpour afterward from... Anna and Shari was just sort of like a lot of relief. How did you feel just sort of after the 800? I felt a lot of relief. I think I was really proud for, I think more so for the people around me than mm -hmm. I was for myself. Like I was definitely happy to make the team. I'm still super happy, super grateful, but I think my reaction was very delayed. And I was- I thought so too, yeah. yeah. It was very delayed. It was a few hours after. I was in Tracktown Pizza actually with Coach Johnson. Uh, my family hadn't gotten there yet. And I'm just at the table and I'm like, Coach Johnson, we've had so many sad moments. Like we finally got a happy one. And I just bust out in tears, like crying. And so I'm in track town pizza, just a mess, like <laughs> crying. People are probably looking at me crazy, but it was very, very delayed. I'm not sure why. I think it was just like when I was laying on the track and I saw the results pop up, I think it just, it felt like relief. It felt like years of emotional physical relief that just kind of poured out of me my family was very emotional um my my college teammate alex gokenauer braun dyke mm -hmm. now she didn't finish the meet but she was there i saw her in the victory lap she was super emotional but it was delayed i think it took like a day for me to feel it but i definitely had all of the emotions what i love about doing these conversations just sort of like the day or two after is that you have had a little bit more time to process things uh as opposed to when you're coming through the mix zone and even just sort of like that the 800 probably mm -hmm. felt like a blur and like everything like you black out essentially for like about an hour um that night was it hard to get to sleep Oh, I didn't go to sleep until like four o'clock in the morning. And then my dad was blowing up my phone at like 630 in the morning. So that whole day I was running off of like two and a half hours of sleep. But obviously, I mean, I wouldn't change it. I think just now today, I don't even know what today is. What's today? Thursday. We competed on Monday. Today's the first day where I don't feel like I'm just dragging around. Like I finally got some sleep last night, but it, it did. It took a, it took a couple of days to like get some sleep and get off of my phone and like my phone has I probably have hundreds of unread messages just from the weekend people yeah. congratulated me so it's been crazy are a lot of those messages that the ones that you have open just sort of like yes they're all like congratulatory and like super happy for you but how many of them are like referencing just sort of like the whole journey and like the path from like the last couple of years knowing how hard it was right a lot of them I think I mean a lot it was a very public thing it was, you know yeah. that happened and it surprises me sometimes, obviously people in my circle, uh, people that n actually know me, just not on social media, obviously I know that they remember those things, but it's the people that don't really know me in real life mm -hmm. or some of the fans that remember like yeah. what happened. Um, because again, like everyone around me knows. And so it was just, they were happy for me because they know the journey, but just also, yeah, the people that don't know me and the fans, they all remembered that and I was kind of glad that people remembered that because it's not just like oh she made she had a good year she made the team like no this was years and years uh late I guess or this is yeah. years and years of work um and so I'm glad that people remember people recognize that and it's being acknowledged it's a little delayed gratification for both you and Anna because both yeah. strong contenders to make that 2021 mm -hmm. team and unfortunate circumstances for the two of you what was it like i guess when you finally get to you know that tent afterwards or if it might have been like in drug testing or just the two of you like what was that conversation like afterwards when there's like no tv cameras and all that stuff like yeah. did you have that moment we did uh the very first one i think was on the victory lab it took us both a really long time to come around the women the men's 400 no the women's 800 was running and we were at like the 300 mark they wanted us to stay there until the race was over oh my gosh and we were just like yo we made the team <laughs> um just through like the circumstances like you said like both of us had the mishaps in 2021 she obviously had the knee surgery and then i was healthy for at the start of the competition but then each event something was going wrong i was clearing stuff on my last attempt mm -hmm. uh the javelin on the last attempt and so 
we were just talking about like how gritty I was through that, how much she's had going on. And I think both of our families were truly happy like for each other. Her mom sent me a really nice message on Instagram. Her whole family like gave me a hug. I think my whole family gave her a hug. So like we really pull for each other. We really root for each other just because we know like, again, what that heartbreak feels like. And a lot of people can't relate mm -hmm. to that. How did you clutch up in this competition? Because it was sort of like, <sighs> You know, for Coach Johnson, I wish we would have had like a heart rate monitor on, on that guy. Oh my goodness, like, You must have been driving him crazy and just sort of like if it came down to, you know, the third or final attempt, like you found a way. I think like that's kind of like the, the motto for this whole entire competition for you. You found a way. Right. I did. I think Coach Johnson joked the next day. He was like, you owe me a spa day because I lost years of my <laughs> life in this competition. Uh, I don't know. I think... It, Coach Johnson would really just remind me, like, when I would be in the back, like, crying, like, Coach Johnson, I can't run, my, like, something's going on. He would just remind me, like, no, this is Olympic trials. Like, you've worked really hard to be here. You deserve to be here. Like, you will be fine. Mm -hmm. You just have to, like, push through. Um, and so, yeah, I think it just was, like, a culmination of all the work. Like, I would just, I would be in some of the events, and I'm like, I didn't wait three years. Mm -hmm to get here and not clear 173 yeah. or not like do stuff that I do at practice or sometimes that I don't even do at practice. Sometimes we don't even jump at 173. And so, yeah, I think it was, it was that like, I don't want to wait another four years. I don't know where I'll be in four years. I might, you know, be running around with some kids or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I just, I didn't want to feel that. And I think I just, I would remember everything that we've been through, everything that my family and like the people close to me, because when you don't make it, it hurts them too. Yeah. Like they hurt for you. And so, yeah, I think that was kind of what was pushing me through. Anna was super honest when I sat down with her and she was like, I don't know if I would have been okay if I didn't make this team. Like she's, she openly spoke about that with her coaches. Like, I don't know how I'll be able to continue on. Like, right. That That's like two Olympic teams missed due to whatever my, it could have been. How would you have dealt oh. with it? Now that we don't have to worry about that. Now that like, we don't have to worry. No, I definitely agree. Because um, I think in 2021, like looking back, I don't know how I dealt with that. And I would tell people like, I see why people retire after missing Olympic teams. And this one was only three years mm -hmm. from so 2021. The next one is a full four years. And so, yeah, I think I definitely, <laughs> I probably, I probably would have retired yeah. or uh, that that just would have been very hard for me knowing that it wasn't something that's like a long shot dream like it's something that I was prepared for something that I could do yeah um and just not not doing it hits differently yeah. like yeah because again I've felt that and it just being three years later that would have been a tough one I think uh, I really would have had to lean on the people around me y'all wouldn't have seen me at least for a few days a few weeks while I just I gathered what actually happened. Yeah. This per this competition in particular, how painful was it? Because, like, I've, I was reading up. I was like, there was, what, knee, foot, ankle? What, what, was, what was hurting on this one? Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, after the hurdles, I don't know if I stepped wrong. Like, yeah. when I hit the hurdle, uh, I'm not sure. But I went into the high jump. Like, okay, I warmed up well. I think I cleared 180 in warm-ups. And then after I sat there, I was like, wait, my ankle hurts. <laughs> And which I think, which is why I started hitting those those bars. Uh, so the, the ankle started hurting in the high jump. It made it really hard to start clearing bars. And then the ankle just kind of stayed that way through the rest of the competition wow. on day one. Um, we had the break. I came back for the shot put. And the break, I think, kind of worked opposite of my favor on day one because it just let the ankle get stiff. Yeah. So then I came back after the few hours, and I could hardly warm up. And I was like, Coach Johnson, I was having a heart attack. I'm in the back. He's like, are you okay? And we're in front of a lot of people. And I'm like, no, I'm not okay. <laughs> and I just started crying. I was like, I can't run. But I think just having that break, just let it kind of stiffen up. And shot put, like, helped. Mm -hmm. I think because it just wasn't, if you go back and watch the film, I don't even know if you can see me, but for the entire shot put, I would throw, and then I would jog in place. Like, I think I sat down in the shot put maybe two times for, like, two minutes oh each. Gosh. Other than that, like, I'm in the background jogging just really slowly trying to warm up the ankle. Um, and then after the 200, Michelle fell. I fell into her and, like, tumbled and rolled. And so the next day, my knee was kind of hurting. Oh, my god. I gosh. think from that. And so getting ready for the long jump, I couldn't really warm up for the long jump. Uh, and it got to a point where, like, 
I'd do a stride and then Dustin would like work on my knee, work on my hamstring. I'd do another stride and on the broadcast, you could probably see me like way off to the side. I'd run, do a jump, and then I'd go lay and he'd work on my stuff and then I'd get back up there and I don't really know how I like mustered up the energy to <laughs> run down the, the long jump runway, but when we came out for the 800, everything just stopped hurting. Wow. Uh, like everything literally just stopped hurting and I ran the 800. I did feel it a few hours after the 800, but I don't know. That's if adrenaline. It was adrenaline. Yeah. yeah. Like I was just praying. I was like, oh God, please like get me through these events. And just each one, I was doing just enough. Mm -hmm. Everything was just, I mean, even the 800 was just enough to cover. Yeah. Um, I think that's just a testament to the hard work, like the faith, all the people that back home that's praying for me, all the people that were pulling for me in the stadium. So it was crazy. Is the heptathlon the most emotional event in track and field? Is that what I'm kind of gathering? Absolutely. So because everybody else, think. you just do your one and whether it goes good or bad, like you're emotional, <laughs> but like a miler doesn't have to run the mile and then come back and run it again. I mean, I guess sprinters can somewhat relate. They do a, a semi and then an hour and a half later have to do a final. But even then, like imagine having another hour and a half and then running it again and then having another hour and a half and running it again. So yeah, it's very emotional. You kind of have to just take it one event at a time. And if one doesn't go well, like you can't take that energy into the next one mm -hmm. or it can just take you downhill from there. How, what did you take away from your experience in Budapest that like you're hoping, you know, will be valuable for Paris? It's like, you know, the heptathlon is just filled with amazing athletes and i think the team that we're fielding is going to be very strong um but the rest of the world is also very strong yeah the rest of the world is strong i think it's interesting like i'm a little older and last year at, <laughs> in budapest i had the two fouls in the long jump and a nuke vetter the she's mm -hmm. from the netherlands yeah. she was sitting next to me she was like we're the old girls in here like we got it we know what we're doing because she also had two fouls i ended up fouling out whatever but um i mean i'm 29 years old but i've I feel young in terms of the hip. Like, mm -hmm. I think up until last year, I never even really considered myself a hip. I was like, I'm a long jumper hurdler that does a hip sometimes. And that's kind of how we approached our season. Like, mm -hmm. and even in 2021, I ran lots of hurdle races, did lots of open stuff. I think I did two hips that year. Okay. Last year was my first time actually, like, Coach Johnson's like, no, we're doing HEPs. You're not going to these open events. You are a heptathlete. And so now it's like a lot more focus on training. I do four or five HEPs a year. Wow. Uh, so it just, it's very different. And I'm still like learning the event. Um, but I said, say like in Budapest last year, I think was the first time that I really like considered myself like elite in mm -hmm. the heptathlon. And like after day one, I think we were one, two, three, maybe, or we were all the U.S. people. We were all up there. And I was like, oh, we're sweeping. <laughs> I can really do like I was like, oh, I can really do this. Yeah. Like I I I mean, these girls are really good, but I'm also really good. And I think that kind of changed my mindset just coming into this year. Like the goal wasn't just to make the team like we want to make the team. Yes, check that off. Okay, and then now put ourselves in a position to get a medal. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if I can put together a full HEP, yeah. then I would be able to do that. And so, yeah, I think Budapest just kind of prepared me for this year. It gave me some experience on that world stage. Obviously, having the three fouls last year and, like, the emotional breakdown, like, I think I was able to use that this year just in, even in the trials like mm -hmm. i fouled the first one 591 which for me is not good even the 629 is not good but for the circumstances like a last attempt jump we need to put something on the board we can't have a foul and i was able to do that but i think without the mishap in budapest it would be a different situation can you describe for the people who may not be as familiar with just sort of like the toll on your body of completing like a heptathlon over two days like how are you feeling i guess we're what 48 hours since yeah. the competition and then you know i'm a distance runner so i think of it as just sort of like oh like my body has two marathons in me for the year right, right? thinking of doing five is how i view of it as, i view it as like oh like a heptathlon and a marathon must be very similar in terms of just like how, how taxing they are on the body to so to think that you're doing five four to five in a year seems like a lot it is a lot i think i mean i haven't done that many this season yeah. but last year i think we kind of had to just 
I mean, Coach Johnson really wanted me to get in the mindset of like, you are a heptathlete, and that is all we are going to do. So we yeah. kind of, I mean, some might say we may have overdone it, but he just really wanted me. It had been a few years since I did like a high level heptathlon. Um, so five is a lot, but I think afterwards, especially like super emotional heps like this, like, yeah need a few days you start feeling the nicks and the pains that you like acquired throughout the competition like my legs are all scraped up i have bruises on my feet on my ankles like so we're just letting some of that heal like letting the emotions kind of come back down uh do some pull workouts before we get back started next week mm -hmm. uh usually like during the year i'll do a hep and then i'll have like two three days off and then we get right back to it okay uh just to limit like the amount of days that we're missing for training but like right now like the work's been done we're just going to kind of let it sit let the body heal and then get ready for paris paris i mean you must have been looking forward to this just when, when they announced like oh the 2024 olympics are going to be in paris i think everyone lit up because it right. was like oh like that sounds like you know one we're returning back to normalcy with like full stands you know the, the city itself is beautiful and we're gonna be able to really celebrate like the olympic games what are you looking forward to the most out of like all the festivities You're oh gonna my do goodness opening ceremonies i'm doing everything i was like oh i'm going to everything if they're giving some some free ice cream in front of the eiffel tower i'll be there we got uh, free ice cream here at prince <laughs> we got free, so i'm gonna go get some <laughs> uh but i i'm looking forward to opening ceremonies i think just as a fan of the olympics yeah. like watching that as a child growing up like that's gonna be crazy so i'm excited to be a part of that to see it like in real life to be to be there i think i'm super excited for that obviously the competition uh and then my family like i mean tokyo i mean if you're an olympian you're an olympian but i think that it may have been like a blessing in disguise. Tokyo family members couldn't be there. Mm -hmm. And like this one, like I have such a big support system and just everyone that's poured into me, like they can be there. And it's also like they can be a part of it just as much as I can. And so I'm I'm happy about that. I heard some, some of your family book tickets before. They did. Wow. And part of me was like, don't tell me that. Y'all are going <laughs> to stress me out. But someone told me like I was telling someone that and he was like, well, just take it like don't let it stress you out take it with confidence like yeah. they believe that you are going to make the team like they have that much faith in you that they're preparing ahead of time so luckily like they didn't tell me too much they would just kind of say like oh we booked our flights to paris <laughs> like oh we got our airbnb and so i think for me like while it can add a little bit more pressure it does like it's like oh y'all really think that i can and that also gives me a little bit more like confidence and motivation like yeah, they really believe this isn't just a, a dream that's like, oh, I made it to the Olympic trials and I might make the team. Like, yeah. they believe that I could. When you mentioned being a fan of, like, the Olympics, did you ever envision yourself competing in the heptathlon or was it a different event for your own Olympic dreams? Uh, I think the older I got, it was like, okay, the heptathlon is the, the way that I'm going to go. Um, but, you know... I wish I could just be fast to run the hundred. <laughs> like, I, I don't say everyone. just be fast. Like that's something easy, but like, that's like the sexy event. Like yeah. I'm trying to be with Shakari. Like I'm trying to, <laughs> I think someone asked me once on Instagram, like if I could do any other event, what would it be? And I was like, Oh, I'd anchor a four by one. Yeah. Like to There's do something like to that, that would be crazy. <laughs> I've never even run the hundred, but, uh, yeah, I think the older I got, it was like, okay, that's what I'm really good at. Like, I like the hurdles, I like the long jump, but I'm really good at that. Mm -hmm. Is there any other sort of, like, event group or athlete? I, one of my favorite things is hearing the stories of the friendships that pop up on, mm -hmm. you know, world championship or Olympic teams where it's like, oh, like, you never would have thought, of, like, this distance runner and this shot put thrower or, like, all of a sudden best friends after, right. um, you know, they shared a team together. Is there someone on the team that you're looking forward to, like, oh, I'd love to get to know that person a little bit better? Oh to get to know them a little better let's see we've got half the team already named so. we do have half the team uh well obviously i mean i already know her but i'm pulling for shamir to make this team she's mm -hmm. my training partner roommates last year in budapest so she doesn't count but i i really need shamir to be there um let's see someone else that i'm getting that i'm excited to get to know i I'm not sure about that. Yeah. I'm excited for everybody. Like, what about a different sport? Like if you're a like, different oh. sport, I love gymnastics. Yeah, so so like if Simone the Biles. schedule if the schedule permits, I will be at 
every single gymnast, like all the things that they have. I, someone asked me who I want to sit by, and I said Suni Lee because we kind of talk back and forth on Instagram. Like, I love her. I love her energy. Amazing. I'd love to meet Simone. Like, I love gymnastics. So, and, and then obviously the basketball men, yeah, like yeah. LeBron. <laughs> Come on. I think I'm I think I'm more excited to meet non track athletes. Of course. I mean I love our track people. Yeah, but yeah. we see each other all the time. Right. Like I'm trying to see somebody else. Yeah. I'm trying to see somebody else. Is there a sport you want to go see that it like you've never seen in person and you wanna see up close? Like for me, my when I, I went to Rio in two thousand sixteen, first thing I went to go see table tennis because I was like that is something that you only watch in the Olympics. Exactly. That's actually crazy. So then go see just like how fast it actually is in right. real life. It's just it's mind blowing. And so yeah, what, what what are their events? Gymnastics is great. Gymnastics is great. I think I would want to see beach volleyball. It's in front of the Eiffel Tower. Um, yeah. It I looks would, beautiful from the photos I've seen so I far. I would want to see beach volleyball. And also, like, this is very odd, and I still don't even know how they're going to score it, but, like, the break dancing? I know, me too. It's like, odd to me. I heard that I there's see that. <laughs> someone's job, essentially, is now, like, the Olympic DJ, because, like, the I don't know exactly how it works. I haven't watched, like, a video on just how break dancing at the Olympics is going to work, but I think, like, there's a DJ who plays music, and then mm -hmm. it, the athletes have to, don't know what's coming up, and then have to, like... Okay. Respond and then, like, I guess they get it. I don't know. Is it if it's like I ice skating where they get a score? It's gonna work. But regardless, I'll be there. And Olympic DJ sounds like my dream job. Bro, I think <laughs> I'm gonna be in there. I'm like, I'm gonna be going with the music. Yeah. Like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know who's winning or how y'all are choosing the winners. But like, it's just super unique. You should have been like, I, when, when were their trials? I could have right, doubled. I could <laughs> two sport athletes. Look, I could have been. I've been twisting on my head. The pro might not have liked it, but hey. Well, Talia, I appreciate you stopping by. There's so much excitement, you know, happening for you right now. And yeah. the next couple of weeks of training, I'm sure, like, you buckle down and get serious. And um, just really looking forward to cheering for you in Paris. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited. We're going to Paris. So I'll see you there. Awesome. Thank you, Talia. Thank you.